Today I'm going to make a walnut plaque with a maple uh, applique of a sailboat glued onto the center. Start out by making the actual walnut piece which, con which consists of a rope carving that surrounds the letter carving and some various uh, cut out and uh, uh, you know a little profiling on there to make it interesting. Now I start out using ShopBot's uh, Partworks software and uh, define the material size which is a 16 by 11 and 3 quarters piece of uh, wood and uh, and then once that's done I import a, a tool path of the rope carving itself. Now this uh, rope carving tool path is actually or the model is actually bought from a vector art software and then uh, once that's imported I go ahead and uh, put the lettering in and you can see I made a little place for where the uh, where the applique will go and uh, and the profile and uh, cutout tool uh, paths are on there. Now here's the tool paths actually shown in uh, in the blue color so you can uh, make sure that this is going to cut the way you want it to cut and uh, once that once you're happy with that you can actually get the program to uh, demonstrate for you how it's going to cut and to make sure that everything uh, looks uh, exactly like you want it. And uh, when you're all done, you uh, get a good uh, shot here uh, that shows the tabs on the left and the right side, which will uh, hold the uh, centerpiece in position uh, to make sure it doesn't come loose during cutting. And finally, I record all this data in a, a document file so that I can uh, have a good reference later on. Now, since this is the second uh, piece I've made with this same shape, I've got standardized holes drilled into my spoiler board here and just checking the location that I should be screwing is in, in screwing this in is x equals 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 inches y equals 4 1 2 3 4 I've put uh, one inch square cuts on my table so it's easy to measure where this goes and then uh, I use different parts of the table for different pieces so that I don't put all the wear on the lead screws in all the same places. I get to spread the wear around. And that probably is going to pay dividends in years to come. Before you start, you want to go ahead and uh, make sure your axes are zero. And now once they're zeroed, I'm going to go ahead and re, you know, move my zero to the actual corner of the work, which is x equals 7, y equals 4. So I'll go to the move command, move in the x, y axis to 7 and 4. Let it move. Check to make sure it looks about right. Yep. And then I'm going to go ahead and set that to my 0, 0 point using the Z2 command. And now X0, Y0 is at the corner of the board, which is what the whole design is based on. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and go through the uh, spin the warm up routine. And later on, we'll set the Z, Z0 height once we get the correct bit installed. Well, let's get this out of the way now. So I'm going to go to the cuts menu, to the C5 spin a warm up routine. I've got my speed set at about 100 uh, uh, hertz, which is around uh, 6,000 RPM. And I'm going to go ahead and let that run. And it goes through three minutes at, at three different speeds, which I have to manually adjust each time. But we'll let that uh, warm up the spindle so that we can then cut. All right, so I got my first bit in here. It's the uh, quarter inch up cut spiral bit and so first thing I want to do is uh, adjust the Z0 so I'm going to go open the keypad so that I can move the bit to a good place to do this adjustment or to do this uh, calibration I want it right over the top of the surface of the wood and then I'll go ahead and uh, click on my adjust the Z0 make sure the surface is clean 
attach my alligator clip to the pilot nut. And then hit enter and let it do the uh, calibration. <laughs> So I got my X and Y set and my Z zero set and I can just double check that. I'll just tell it to move to the X, Y and safe height home and we'll uh, make sure it goes where we think it should. Okay, and that's where it is. So I'm good to go. Now, let's go ahead and load up the part file. First thing I'll transfer it from my thumb drive to my hard drive. Go ahead and remove my thumb drive so I don't accidentally knock it off and break it. Let's go to cut part and find my file. Life on the Northern Neck rope. Go to open. Go ahead and Hit start. You ask me if tool number one is in the spindle. Yes, it is. It's the quarter inch upcut. Is the Z0 axis zeroed? Yes. It's ready to start. Turn on my vacuum cleaner. quarter inch spiral upcut bit is done and I've just gone ahead and replaced the uh, bit with the 1 8 inch ball nose which is going to do the detailed cutting on the rope and uh, I just finished zeroing out the uh, Z axis on the top of the table so we're all ready to start. Uh, one thing I uh, want to point out too is the thickness of this board is 0.875 it's 7 eighths of an inch and uh, when I make up my tool paths uh, for this particular model, I made it up for a nominal one inch tool path, but uh, actually I need to find out the actual thickness of the board uh, and uh, make a modification to that file before I run it so it knows the correct thickness of the board because uh, although doing the rope, uh, there's no problem, uh, you're taking a, a Z reading on the top of the surface and so the machine doesn't care how thick the wood is. When we finally get to the point of cutting all the way through this, it's important to know how thick the board is so we don't go drilling a quarter inch hole, you know, uh, slot in the in the spoiler board. We just want to basically cut this out with a little bit to spare. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> finished uh, putting the, the uh, half inch uh, ball nose bit in there and now I'm going to zero, zero out the z-axis. Okay, I'm all zeroed out and we should be ready to restart.
one of the things I learned the hard way was that sometimes these tools can slip in the cut. Had that happen a couple times actually, and, it, and the tool would actually dig into the spoil board. And what I think the problem was, I think I had residual oil in the collet and on the tools from the manufacturing process and I think that was causing the, the tool to slip so I cleaned everything in mineral spirits you know the collets and the tools haven't had the problem since so that's kind of a lesson learned the hard way maybe someday I'll do a video on how to fix your spoil board when you cut into it with your tool but that'll be for another day Okay, we're all zeroed out. We're ready to cut the lettering. Now I'm ready to do the cutout. That would be cut the uh, on the outside of the rope all the way around until this is freed up. Now I've made this with tabs so that this inside part should not become completely free. If it did, it would just you know, break up and make big gouges along the bit. We don't want that to happen. So um, we'll leave some tabs, and uh, this is always the hairy part. You know, you got to make sure that you did this right, or you could uh, have wasted a lot of time. unscrew this, pick it up, cut through the tabs with a chisel, then I've got quite a bit of sanding to do. We've got some rough, you know, rough spots here. It's the way it is. Uh, now you may wonder why I have a knot right in the middle of this. The whole plan was to take one of these sailboats that I had already cut out uh, of a sheet and glue it right in the middle there so I was able to use this piece that had a knot because I knew the sailboat would be covering it. So that ought to make a nice effect. At this point the uh, work uh, cutting the plaque is done and it's time to get the sailboats uh, on. Uh, these sailboats I made using uh, the Partworks software and a, a vet, uh, vector art uh, model of a schooner and I cut them in a series of four and then uh, he took each one out one at a time and lowered it on and glued it on to the plaque in the, uh, in the position you can see here and then did a little trimming of any fuzz and so forth with a sharp gouge. Okay, this is the finished piece cut out. I've glued the applique of the schooner on there. That applique looked like this. It was cut in a series of uh, four from a single sheet of, uh, of maple and uh, it's a different technique than doing a large piece like this because it's so delicate uh, but once cut out it can be glued right on. Now the, uh, the shop bot cuts this rope rather roughly and uh, which in a way is good because if you really ever worked with rope you know that it's not smooth it's got little uh, hairs of, of fiber coming out but still I want to clean it up a little bit so this is where you do a little hand work using a V-gouge V, gar a v gouge and uh, some other gouges here to try and just clean up just little places 
where there's a little too much fuzz coming out. I also used a plane to plane the edges to make them nice and smooth. And of course I sanded uh, the face, front and back faces before I ever cut on the shop bot so I wouldn't have to be doing a lot of sanding after the, the, the routing was done. But we'll go ahead and clean this up and then we'll, we'll finish it. And here's a quick shot of the piece all finished and ready to go.